Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today we are going to cover some Java 8 scenario based coding interview questions. We are also going to cover some optional methods to cater to those requirements. Please like, share and subscribe to support us and we are setting a like target of 500 likes. So let's get started. A scenario can be if you are given an employee database, fetch the employee given by an ID. So I am going to give you an ID and you have to return me the name of that employee. Now there can be a condition that the name of employee is not present while registering the person might want to keep himself or herself anonymous. If it is not present you must return anonymous as the default name use use optional and java 8. So this, this is the scenario which can be asked in an interview. So let's see how we, we can cater to this requirement. So what we used to do to fetch an employee given an id. We in the previous video we have seen that right to get an employee object what we do is repository dot find by id and fetch an employee object but what you get is an optional object okay if it is not empty then fetch the name now this name can be empty so I'll give you a case so this was my employee table it was having six records where fifth and sixth records name were empty they want to be anonymous therefore their name was null. In that particular case, this can be nullable. So what we used to do was check if it is nullable and return it. And what do we used to do is we used to do if else condition. If name is not null, then get LLs give an exception. Let's see if this, this is running or not. So my server is up and running. Let's see if I if I hit it with three, it returns me code. So was the code the name of the employee with ID three? Yes, it was. So this is working fine, but what the ID which I'm passing is five. So the value is null. So it says no such element exception because you're directly trying to get it. You don't ha you, you haven't used the if else condition. Now our scenario says given an employee DB is the employee with ID and return the name of employee. If it is not present return default name. So what I can do here is I can create an optional object of my employee and use or else and the name can be anonymous right with this I'll be having two benefits the return type will now be string and not optional because now either I'll get the name or if the container of getting the name is empty then anonymous will be returned. And now I don't have to check whether it is present or not I don't have to check whether things are available or not. If the container is empty, container is not empty. I don't have to, I don't have to check anything. I just have to return the name because even if the container is not null, it has containing some data, it will return you else it will return you anonymous. So if I pass three here, I'll get the name because container is having code as the value. If I'm passing five, the name is empty. If I pass as five, the name is empty. In this case, anonymous will be returned to me. So let's test it with three first. Output should be code. And let's test it with five output should be anonymous. So this is how the in the, in the previous step we used to get the exception. Now we are not getting any kind of exception. We have handled it with anonymous uh, default value. So or else method is used to retrieve the value in wrapped inside the optional instance. It takes one parameter which acts as a default value. So this or else method contains the default value. The or else method returns the wrap value if it is present or else the argument of the device. So what does this or else method do? It will fetch the value from the container so that you don't have to do name dot get. It's, it, you don't have to do this. Who will do this for you? Or else method will do internally this for you. So what is the task of or else method in optional to fetch the value from the container? If it is present, return it. If it is not present, use the argument it has as a default value and return it to you. And hence, you can just return the return type of this particular line as it is in your response entity. So this is the beauty of or else method. And this is the syntax of or else method. Now we'll move to default value with or else get method. Given an employee database, fetch employee by ID and return name of employee. If it is present, return it. If it is not present, return the default one. Now you will ask me, it is the same question as before. So the, the way to do that is also same. So what we can do is we can use or else get. Now the difference is that or else get method takes a supplier as an input. To give it a supplier, you need a lambda function. 
what does the supplier takes? It takes a lambda expression. This method also sees whether this container which is created by optional contains some value. If it contains, it will return it or else it will return the anonymous which is the default value of this or else get method. So this runs the same way. If I try to run it with 3, I can get code. If I try it with 5, I can get anonymous. So good so far. You are, you Now you will say me this is as good as else or else method. What is the difference? It just... It takes supplier and it takes a single value, which is a default value for it. So what's the difference? So you can see that the or else get method is similar to, to or else method. However, instead of taking a value to return it, if the optional value is not present, it takes supplier functional interface, which is invoked and returns the value of invocation. So rather than taking simple argument of anonymous, it takes a supplier functional interface and how do you implement a functional interface with a lambda expression so this is how i've given a lambda expression here so now you will ask me function it seems same so what is the difference initially the difference between else or else and or else get is not clear they both seem to be same but there is a, a very subtle and very important difference between the two which can affect your performance drastically now you will ask me how i can see both the uh, results are same so let me quickly create one method for you, say string call me. And it says print I am called is the print method. And it returns me the anonymous. So rather than giving anonymous directory, can't I just call this method call me? I can do that, right? So now if I try to get my name, it will return me anonymous or it will return me this, right? When it comes to this method, of or else get I can do the same thing but now my method will change so this is not going to return me a string rather it's going to call a call me method so this is again the supplier part so it takes a no argument methods as a lambda expression and give it a call to call me so it gives a call to call me if I have a value in my container so if I ask you to pass three if I pass three then code should be returned and or else method should not be called. That means there should no, not be any kind of printing on console. But if there is no container object here, the container object is empty, then or else method is going to be called. And when it is going to be called, then this, this is going to print on console. So now our focus will be on console more. I'll just comment the or else get method and I'll show you how this works. Okay. So if initially I'm going to pass five. So what will happen if I pass five, the name is null. If name is null, or else is going to call and a method is going to call and a print I am called. So let's hit it with five. Okay, so it returns I am called. Great, so good, I'll clear the console now, okay? Now if I hit it with three, it is going to have a name which is known as code. If that is the case, or else should not be called and no message should be print on console. But it's not the case. Let me show you. When I hit it with three, I am called is again called. Now you'll ask me, this or else method should be called only and only when the container is empty. If container is containing some value, why is this method called? The or else method, whether or not the wrapped value is present or not, the default object is created. Now what is happening is or else method is calling a function. In both cases function is called. If that is the case, the string value is automatically created. The string object is created. And since the object is created, which is never going to be used because value is present, the return type is always anonymous. So if I try to hit with three, the value is code. It's not anonymous. So the return type that is anonymous is never used. So this is a problem in or else method. What it does is if it doesn't contain a value, it will call a method. If it contains a value, still the method is called. And if method is called, the variable is returned. Object is created of type string, which returns you anonymous. But it is never used because you return the code. The it or else method returns what is inside the container if value is present inside the container. So Java, JVM will call garbage collector and will remove this anonymous uh, object, the reference to this anonymous object. So it's not a problem. But when it comes to 
a good DB calls. So if I say I'll give you an example, the, if you don't get a name in this database, hit another database and hit another database. Try two, three different databases. Some of the table might contain the name of that employee. So there must be like three to four kinds of database called DB call one, DB call two, and many more. These are costly stuff. So if you have a value in the container, why do you have to call database many times? This is a costly stuff and hence it will reduce your performance. That is why do not use or else method, even though it looks, it works same as that of or else get method. It doesn't work same. Let me show you how. Now if with or else get method, if I hit with five, for sure or else get method will be called because five has null value in the container and hence the print will be I am called. So this is fine. Anonymous is returned and I am called is printed on console. I'll clear the console. If I hit with three, what will happen? Container contains the name as code. If it contains code, the or else method will not call the call me method because it's a supplied, it's a lambda function. There is no call to this method. There is no object creation, no printing of this value. And hence, if I try with three, code is returned and nothing is printed on console. There is no I am called printed on console. That means your or else get method didn't call this call me method, which was the case, which was not the case with or else because it used to call it and hence it reduces your performance and this increases your performance. It doesn't give many calls to databases and hence this reduces your cost and increases your performance. So that's a very big difference between or else and or else get method. Notice that with or else get the retrieved wrapped value, the call me method is not even invoked since the container contains the value. So in or else method, if container contains the value, method call me is not called. However, in the case of or else, whether the value is wrapped or not, default value is created. Default object is created. The uh, Not only the object is created, even the database calls might go hit if it has calls to different DBs. So this is just creating one redundant object which is never used. So in our case, which is that object which is never used? This anonymous object, string object is never used. So if that is never used, there is no significant cost to creating an object and JVM knows how to deal with them. How will the JVM deal with such objects who does not is who is not used at all? They will garbage collect it. However, if a method call makes calls to web services, even query a database, the cost becomes very obvious. That's the thing I've told you. If it has multiple database calls or the REST API calls, this becomes a costly stuff and will impact you in terms of performance. Now, I'm doing one more scenario based question and then we'll finish it up. Now, given an employee table, fetch employee object with ID and written name in the uppercase. We have already done that, but it is not present then throw an exception to stop the program execution. So this is very important. There might be some cases where having the name of an employee is the absolute condition. If that doesn't happen, you should throw an exception and stop the program then and there. How will you fix that? How will you do that? So there's nothing much to do in it. It's a simple optional or off null label method. Java it makes your life very easy. Rather than or else get method, what you can do is or else throw. So there are two ways to throw an exception. You can throw an existing exception. So uh, this works as good as, as if it is, was not at all present. So suppose it is not present and I put an optional string here and I'll do get name.get. What will happen? In case there is some value in present, it will give you the value. If it is not present, it will give you an exception, illegal argument exception. So if I hit it with three, it will give you code. If it doesn't, it will give you an exception. So no such element exception. So the same way, if you don't want to do this get, and if you don't want an optional object, what you can do is use or else throw. Then you don't have to do get here. You, don't, you won't get an optional object. It will automatically throw an exception to you. So for three, it will run as fine as it was working before, but with five, it, as expected, it will give you an exception, no such element exception. What, what advantage you got? You are not getting an optional object. You don't have to get an object from it. But what if I, this is such a non-user friendly exception. 
no such element exception is something I don't understand. What I want to do is this also takes a supplier. So or else pro also takes a supplier. So let me give a sub what the supply takes a lambda expression. So let me give it an extra lambda expression which says new uh, illegal argument exception and my and my user defined message. The ID you passed has no name associated with it. Please pass another ID. So this is the illegal argument exception. The ID you pass has no name. Please pass another ID. If I now run it, if I pass three, it should not give me any kind of exception. And should return code. It does. If I pass five, I don't want non-user friendly exception. I get illegal argument exception. It says the ID you pass has no name associated with it. Please pass another ID. So this is so much user friendly. If you pass it in front end, you can just show as it is to the clients. So this is how you can use existing optional methods to solve your day to day scenarios of handling the default values using optional. We have multiple more scenario based questions using optional and interaction with the filters, map, limit and many more such questions. If you want us to cover it, please let us know in the comment section. We'll continue this Java 8 series. Thank you.